Welcome back. In this video, you're going to learn how to mutate variables and also how and why JavaScript does type coercion. But before we talk about any of that, I want to show you something else that we also have in any programming language in the world, and that is comments. So with comments, we can really comment like pieces of code and describe what they do. Okay, so let's try it out. And in JavaScript, there are two types of comments. There are single line comments, and we work them just like this, and then also multi-line comments. And I'm gonna show you in a second how they work. But with single lines, we simply write slash slash like this, and then we can do any text that we want after that. So in here, I'm simply gonna write that these are the variable naming rules, okay? Because that's actually what I did here in these lines of code. So I showed you how we have to name our variables. And so now with this comment here, I can very simply describe that this is what we did here. Okay, we can also do a multi-line comment and that is slash asterisk and then asterisk and slash again. And then on multiple lines and everything that we put here in between will be a comment. So one line of comments, two lines, and so on and so forth. Okay, and here I'm going to use this multi-line comment to say that this lecture here was about variables and data types. So variables and data types, and this is also a common like pattern where you then add some asterisk here, just like this, basically just to separate these lectures. Okay, so variables and data types, that was the last lecture, and now in this lecture we will have variable mutation and type coercion. All right. Now, just in order to get rid of this code here so that it doesn't get in my way, I can also comment out this entire piece of code, just like I did before. So that's another common use case of comments, is where you basically comment out some code that you don't want to get in your way for some time. Okay, and so now I commented it, and now it will no longer be executed. So I can reload this now, and then we don't have anything locked to our console, because all of this here is, is gray, and so it's, it's really commented out. Okay, anyway, let's continue with our person's example here, and learn all about variable mutation and type coercion. Okay, so I'm going to reuse some of these variables. So first name is still John. And let's also define the age as being 28 again. So we have here two different data types, string and number. But let's see what happens if we want to print them together to the console. Okay, so let's give it some space here. I prefer when this text here is a bit more at the top. So console.log. And so let's basically do a string which contains John space 28. Okay, so we can say first name, then we can use the plus symbol, and I'm going to explain to you later that this is an operator. So for now, let's just simply use this here to join these strings. Then we can do a space, and then another plus to add the H. Okay, so we are hoping that this here will then become John space 28 to the console. Okay, so let's check that out. And indeed, we have John 28. So how did this work? Because remember that H here is actually a number and not really a string, but still it locked it here as, as a string in this entire John 28 string. And so this works thanks to something called type coercion. Okay? So what this means is that JavaScript automatically converts types from one another as it's needed. And in this specific case, it converted this number here to a string in order to be able to join these three strings. So John is a string, then this space here is also a string, and then h, the number, will automatically be converted by JavaScript also into a string, so that it can then join all of these strings into one bigger string. And so automatically JavaScript does this work for us here by a process called type coercion. And other programming languages are not like this, we would have to convert our variables, but JavaScript is easier, it takes all that work away from us and, and does it automatically. And joining strings like this here is just one of many examples of type coercion that we will encounter throughout the course. So type coercion here happens all the time in, in JavaScript. All right, let's now try out another example here with uh, joining strings. And so let's create some more variables. So job. And now I'm going to show you something different, which is basically to declare many variables on the same line 
and then define them later on. So job, to say John's job, and then we can also define a variable called is married. So basically like a marriage status saying true or false, whether he is married or not. And now we can say job is teacher and then that is married is false. Okay, so we declared both of these variables here and they are then undefined, remember? So that's what we had here. So I declared the variable here, job in this case, and it was then undefined, remember? And only later in this line here, I then assigned a value to that variable. And so that's the exact same thing that we do here. So here we declare multiple variables on the same line, and then I assign the values to them here in these different lines. Okay, and so that's also actually uh, like a common practice in case that we want to declare many variables, it's a bit cleaner to, to do it like this, all in one line and then simply assign them the values a bit later. Now what happens if we want to log to the console uh, a variable that has the, a boolean here included? So let's try it out with console.log, first name, and then let's say, so John is a, and then the age here, year old, and then finally the job. And if we then want to include the, the boolean that we defined before, well then we can also like, let's say, is he married? So we kind of ask a question here, and then let's see what happens when we try to join the is married variable here into the string. Okay, so that looks a bit confusing here, but what should happen here is John is a 28 year old teacher. Is he married? False. So let's take a look at that and we get this error here and that's just because I was missing this plus sign here. So let's try it again and so John is a 28 year old teacher. Is he married? False. And so you see that even the boolean here gets converted to a string. So JavaScript also does type coercion with booleans. And if we now actually take away this variable here and so I'm commenting it out here well, let's see, then it should say undefined, okay? So even the undefined is coerced into a string, so basically converted into a string, okay? Let's take a look again, and so now it says false. All right, so this is type coercion, and now again I can write a comment here saying what we did in this particular section here, okay? And now let's actually look at the uh, variable mutation. So variable mutation basically means to change the value of a variable. And so that's something that we didn't do up until this point, but of course that's something that we can do with JavaScript variables. And so let's now redefine the age. So we can say age equals 28, for example. And so this time we don't use the var keyword. So this part is not necessary because the variable was already defined before. It's already declared here in this place with the var keyword. And so when we want to change it, we no longer need the var keyword. So all we say is h and then the new value. And in this case here, it is 28 as a string this time. And so as I explained to you in the last lecture, JavaScript automatically figures out the data type and can change it on the fly. So before it was a number and now it is new and it's a string. So that is the magic of the JavaScript dynamic typing, okay? We can also, of course, change something else. Let's uh, change the, the job here. So job, and let's say driver. All right, and so let's now log it again to the console. Or instead of logging, I wanna show you something else. So we've been logging these values to the console all the time, but now I wanna use alert. So let me show you what alert is going to do, and it's and it's this beautiful window here. So we get a pop-up window basically. So John is a 28 year old driver. Is he married? False. Okay. And so this time it's not in a console, but instead it is like this small pop-up or alert window. And you see that basically the page here keeps loading until we actually hit okay here and make this, this pop-up disappear. So the page is, is loading. It's not really, it cannot really finish its work until we hit okay on this. Okay, so we did some variable mutation here and type coercion we also observed. Uh, I showed you the alert, which is an alternative to console.log. Let me just show you uh, something else here. 
which is that we can actually, in an easy way, get data from the user with a similar method, uh, that alert. So we can use prompt and then basically ask a question here. So let's say, what is his last name? Okay, so we say prompt, what is his last name? And we will then be able to input a value. And that value we can then store into a variable. So var last name. So that's what we're asking for here. And then we can log it to the console just to make sure that everything works. So last name, and we can also add the first name here. Okay, so that's the pop-up from before, so this alert here. And now here comes the prompt. Okay, so what is his last name? And let's say Smith. And now this will be stored into the last name variable. And then we can log this variable to the console. So first name plus the last name will of course give John Smith. So Smith is what we just defined. If we now say like Miller, then it will log John Miller. Okay, so that's our input coming from that window. Great, you're progressing at a great level here and already learned a lot of JavaScript. Of course, there's tons more to come. And so let's quickly move on to the next lecture where we're going to talk about some basic operators. So like doing math operators and compare different values with one another. So stay tuned and see you in a second.